DICE is changing attrition, the hotly debated new mechanic that tries to introduce tactics and skill to minute by minute gameplay saw a lot of feedback from the community during the open beta, and DICE is now acting on that feedback. They appear to have taken the community's concerns on board and will be switching things up for the launch of Battlefield 5 in November. In a blog posted up last night, the DICE team came out and clarified their position on attrition after the open beta. Now, it's not a mechanic that every Battlefield player is happy with, but DICE isn't about to remove it from Battlefield 5. They feel it goes hand in hand with the renewed squad play focus of the game, linking in with the new class structure, combat roles providing gameplay benefits, depending on which you choose and run, and players being aware of the needs of the other three soldiers in their squad. All of that plays into the attrition system. But just how is DICE going to go about changing attrition from the open beta? Well, based on feedback from players surrounding their actions the moment they spawned in and feeling quite light on ammunition during initial gunfights, these three big changes have been made to the system. There are some smaller changes as well, and I'll talk about those later in the video. First, you'll now spawn back into the map after dying with more ammunition on your soldier. This will vary on a weapon by weapon basis, but overall you will notice an increase. Secondly, the maximum amount of ammo you can carry, which is higher than what you spawn in with, is now also higher as well. If you collect ammo from dead bodies, ammo boxes or resupply stations and fill yourself right up to the max ammo count, you're going to notice that maximum amount is now higher than what it was before. And lastly, you'll now spawn back in after dying with an additional medical pouch on your soldier. This is the health pouch that you can get from a medic throwing you one if you already have 100 health, or by visiting a healing station and grabbing one. That will now be applied to your soldier automatically when you spawn in. These changes have also been made based on feedback from players that felt they were going on ammo hunts all the time. Rather than focusing on the enemy team's movements, they were more concerned about where their next lot of ammo was going to come from. By the time the open beta finished, I found myself running laps and laps of the Rotterdam map just collecting ammunition, almost replicating Battlefield 1's flag zerging issue in Conquest, where large groups of players would just sprint from flag to flag instead of defending or diversifying their playstyle. I think those ammo crates became side objectives in their own right, and that really wasn't the intention of the attrition system. In the same blog post, the DICE team explained a lot of their ideas behind the attrition system that they were using when developing Battlefield 5, and how they envisioned the system working long term. During the open beta, we were exposed to a rather severe implementation of the mechanic, with fairly limited ammunition on spawn. This led to people seeking out the ammo the moment they spawned in, which wasn't DICE's intention. The intention was to create more thought-provoking, tactical gameplay on the part of the single soldier and the squad, being aware of their own supplies when it comes to ammo and health, and making choices that in previous games wouldn't even have surfaced. Instead, the moment players spawned in, they would seek out a resupply station and grab ammo and a medical pouch, almost completely circumventing the entire attrition mechanic. Now sure, the health regeneration being limited in Battlefield 5 meant if you did have to apply your medical pouch, then you would be exposed to attrition again, being unable to heal any further if you took more damage, but more often than not, on the Rotterdam map, you were close to a healing station anyway, and you could make it there without much issue. And thus, the cycle of moving from healing and supply station to station to station to station was formed. With the three big changes listed above, essentially what DICE is doing is moving the point at which attrition really kicks in for the soldier, further into your soldier's life. Each time you spawn in, the effects of attrition shouldn't be felt until you've engaged a couple of enemies, got yourself into a couple of gunfights, and you aren't immediately needing to go and grab supplies either. You can move off from your spawn point, work with your squad, play the objective a bit more first, before needing to make a decision about whether to attack, defend, or rearm yourself with supplies. 
Now, another change that DICE is making with the attrition system is to lessen the presence of ammo and medical resupply stations the moment a round starts. Now, on the Rotterdam map, being one of the smallest that Battlefield 5 is going to ship with, the distance between these locations in the open beta was quite small, and the fact they were built and ready to go at the start of a multiplayer match only pushed the action of spawning in and finding one straight away even further. You could rely on them to be there and help you out pretty much the moment you started, and really at any point during the match. This is going to be changed up for the launch of Battlefield 5. In the second Dev Talks episode, which aired over a week ago, David Serland and Daniel Berlin, lead developers on Battlefield 5, they explained that on certain flags on all of the maps launching with Battlefield 5, ammo and medical resupply stations will not be built at the start of a round anymore, and instead, you will need to construct them using the fortification system. Any player will be able to build them, but the idea is to increase reliance on your squad mates by leaning into the squad play system. Instead of always seeking out these static resupply stations and making routes around the map to go back to them to get what you need, you can instead ask your squad mates who are running support and medic for ammo and healing supplies. These guys are likely on the move with or near you rather than being on a flag point or a point back in the distance from where you want to be. Basically, start using your squad mates more, and the crutch of these ammo and healing supply stations is being lessened somewhat. Both devs did state, however, that certain points on the map closer to the HQ will have these resupply stations built at the start of a round, but as you get closer into the middle of the maps, that's where these things will need to be built. Another smaller change DICE is making to the attrition system, or really a fix or addition I'd probably call it, is the implementation of a HUD icon for the medic class to notify them of a teammate or a squad mate who isn't carrying a spare medical pouch. During the open beta, this icon wasn't present, and it was harder for a medic to know if they were throwing a pouch to a player to top off their health back to 100, or if they were going to be supplying them with a spare pouch for them to use later on. That's now been implemented, and will be present in the final game. The medic class has taken on an extra responsibility with resupplying these pouches to different players, and I think that's a good trade-off after losing that exclusive ability to revive soldiers, which is now available to all soldiers if they want to revive a fellow squad mate. As a small side system to attrition, the reinforcements available to the squad leader includes a supply canister, which when opened on the ground will offer our ammo and health to different players who walk up to it. Now, I didn't see this used all that much in the open beta on the Rotterdam map, which is where I spent 90% of my time, but I think on larger maps where distances between flag points are larger, you might find your path blocked by different vehicles or enemy infantry, and then this supply canister could come in very, very useful. These will be especially useful if you're a squad leader not running medic or support, since you can then call in an item that those classes would provide you. And while we're on the topic of supply canisters, yes, you can crush enemies with them, just as you could with the supply crates in Battlefield 4, so I'm looking forward to people crushing some camping recon players. And secondly, DICE is implementing different designs for the canisters for the two different factions. The Axis faction will be able to call in a rectangular shaped canister, and the Allies will have a cylindrical one. Purely a cosmetic difference, there's no gameplay benefit to the different shapes, but at least you'll be able to distinguish friendly from enemy if you come across one. And lastly, I spoke briefly about the combat roles earlier on in this video. Those will somewhat bleed into the attrition system as well. Certain combat roles will act differently when it comes to attrition. So for example, the light infantry combat role for the assault class, that will be able to regenerate more health automatically than other roles. Now I believe DICE is setting a uniform limit for all other combat roles apart from light infantry for automatic regen for the launch of the game up to a health value of 30. Anything beyond 30 health on your health bar and you'll need to seek proper medical supplies to get your health back. The light infantry roll, however, will be able to gain a little bit more health automatically, although at the moment, we don't know what that value actually is. Also, that same combat roll will be able to scavenge more ammo from dead enemies, giving them slightly more bullets back than other combat rolls. 
So, in general, DICE has scaled back the intensity of the attrition system in Battlefield 5 for the launch of the game, and in turn has lessened its overall impact on gameplay, pushing it back later into the lives of soldiers who spawn in. Now, I personally think this is a good move, and now finds more of a middle ground between those players who were more than happy with the balance that previous games like Battlefield 3, 4 and 1 offered, and the players who wish for Battlefield to return to a more tactical shooter like the days of Battlefield 2. Considering how quickly DICE has fiddled with the system, however, I do think it's likely that we will see more changes to this down the road after launch into the live service as players settle into playing the game and working out playstyles that suit them. But let me know what you think. Are these changes enough for you? Do you want more scale back from attrition? Do you want to see attrition gone completely? Or are you one of the people who didn't mind it in the first place? Let me know down below in the comments section. Make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications switched on. Click that little bell next to subscribe and make sure they are on. That way you won't miss any of my future Battlefield 5 videos. And thank you very much for watching today. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.